If I tell you that this image right here was rendered on a web browser, what if I tell you that this other image was also rendered on a web browser? And what if I tell you that you can also render your own images, your own 3D objects on a web browser for free? Crazy, right? Now, this is something that is in its experimental stage from some guys at Light Tracer. And Light Tracer is a tool that two guys, actually these dudes that you see here, has gone ahead to build to actually make life way more easier for artists like me and you out there. And what this does is it gets your object and tries as much as possible to make physically correct renders out of these things it is fast the lighting is pretty easy materials are very easy to manipulate and it makes use of some sort of progressive refinement over time the only tool you need to get this thing working for you is a chrome or a firefox browser and an internet connection and if you're excited to know how light tracer works and how you can manipulate this amazing tool that exists for free on the internet to create your own perfect looking renders let's get started all right so light tracer is in its experimental stage and if you want to get access to this all you have to do is get a chrome browser or even a firefox browser if you have a touch browser or any of the mods that has been made for chrome of course you can still use this so for you to get access to this first things you need to do is to go over to the website known as lighttracer.org and directly on this website you would be able to find this page and if you scroll all the way down you get to see the about a little bit of what this thing does and down here you're going to see a set of galleries of probably six things that has been made available. You can download the demo scenes and we're going to use these demo scenes today to talk about how you can work with this tool. So next things which you need to do is before you get started, right? Before you get started, I would suggest that you come over to this GitHub where you can find how to configure your browser for best performance. And now if you're using an AMD, Intel, or even an Nvidia card, that is not a problem, right? Because I also tried this on my very old PC which is just working on an uh, Intel and it works perfectly fine. Now, once you get to go through this, try as much as possible to understand two things out of it. First and foremost, it gets to make use of the GPU which you have or the processor that you have on your PC. And then it makes use of the WebGL2. And how do you check if your PC is quite compatible with this? You need to go over to this page which is the WebGL report and then automatically it's going to analyze your PC and tell you what you have installed and how you can work with this. If you're wondering if you can use this in a Safari browser, yes, of course, but for now they're still saying that they need to test out a couple of things directly here before it gets to work. So let's get right into this and see all of these fun things that's happening here. So directly inside here, once this is open, you would notice that we have a huge viewport that we can work with. Then you're going to notice these two panels by the side. The two panels by the side are actually responsible for two things individually. They all are responsible for two things individually. So the first one here is responsible for your geometry. So it's called the geometry editor and also the render setting, probably call it editor as well. And the next one has to do with material. So I would also like you to say it's the material editor and you know the light editor. So the light source the, and the material stays here while render settings and the geometry editor stays here. So directly in here you're going to see a simple IPR which is an interactive progressive rendering that is going on on your viewport. So whatever you throw inside here you get to let's actually move to a very very interesting scene and take a good look at this. All right, so this scene looks quite interesting and maybe we're going to move to something more complex later so directly in here you're going to see that it keeps ray tracing not ray tracing it keeps rendering interactively until it gets to the final quality of what you want so let's talk about this bugger menu real quick so with the bugger menu you can go ahead and import obj files so if you click on the import you can bring in obj files and if you're working with any of the versions of uh, your 3d models or your 3d apps sorry you need to make sure that you know where the y is if you're working with things like maya 
motion builder and you know a whole lot of other cinema 4d the y is always set to go up so you need to make sure you have a clear idea of the axis that is pointing up before you go ahead to start importing your file and so once you go ahead to import this file you can bring them in here you can tell the light tracer to you know calculate the normals for each of the vertex points so with this done what we can now do is we can go ahead and start playing with this geometry so if you have a geometry like this so I'm going to just simply select this one now so this is a single piece you can move this all right so you can move this from one point to another other things that you can do is you can simply do a quick rotation of this uh, tool so I can grab onto this tool and rotate this however I want it to rotate you might not see this because this is actually um, what's it called this is much more of a cylinder so you may not see that so let's just jump back and take a good look all right so you can move this and you can rotate this this rotation is on the local axis these other rotation on the other hand is on the global axis all right so if I start doing this you can see it picks where the center is automatically so we do not have any means of controlling that center as at now as much as i understand so you can yeah have this to be your local rotation and you can use this for your global rotation scaling is simple so you can just scale all right so we like scaling things here all right so you can scale things as much as you want and you can have fun playing with those things when you scale them all right so there's also a couple of things that you can do as we are here what we can do on this other section is within the geometry operation you can actually take on some geometrical task things like copy or maybe making a duplicate is called clone so you can clone we simply makes a duplicate of this particular tool so I can clone and you can see I'm making duplicates of this tool at the same time I can erase this and I can also erase this you can also see some normal so if you bring something in and the normals is not facing where it should you can reverse them you can rebuild the normals and of course you can import or you can make a brand new floor and you might be wondering what is this floor all about this floor is definitely not this so let me go ahead and delete this and show you so you can bring in a floor in form of uh, a backdrop all right or in form of a platform so if you bring a bent floor this is uh, typically your backdrop all right so i'm just going to go ahead and uh, erase this and then you can bring in a floor as a round platform so you can see this as a round platform and at the same time you can go ahead and bring in a rectangular floor so this platform would serve as both background and shadow catcher so you can use this to do very uh, very amazing stuff so you can simply have this as both the background and you can also have it to be the shadow catcher with this done let's move on to something else and you know talk about it so these are the one that i have loaded up here i loaded it up so i can also share a couple of things for you guys so with this here you can go ahead so let's talk about the material real quick or well, before we talk about the material i think it's good let's just go back one moment so i think it's good we talk about the geometrical information or the geometry information so within the geometry information you get to see what this mesh that you're working with is made up of all right so right now we have just one mesh so if i make clone you can see it says instance 2 so you can tell how many of this particular uh, object that you have in your scene is replicated across your scene useful information i tell you all right so if we have this selected as well you can see how much elements that it has inside you can tell how much vertices it is made up of and you know you can also tell the distance you may not be able to tell the distance unless you press this b box button so the bounding box which is this bounding box you can see here all right the bounding box takes into account where this stays in space and you might be saying no that's a lie it doesn't work that way but see what happens so if i start moving this object right you can see within the y-axis is traveling all right so it tells you where it is in space at every given point in time all right so now we're done with that let's go over to where we were here now directly in here i'm going to talk about the material so you here you have a couple or a set of materials that you can work with all right so a set of materials that you can work with uh they are already pre-designed so what i mean by pre-designed is once you click on the user defined materials let's give it some moments to load up you'll be able to actually just throw in the material that you want 
even without creating these materials yourself. So I know a whole lot of people that would prefer to work with uh, materials that has been pre-designed over, you know, creating theirs because of time and also not having the knowledge of how these things are made. So if you want to learn how to make materials or use the hypershade in Maya or maybe talk about materials, link is going to be in the description and you can check the channel. We've talked about a whole lot of things that has to do with rendering so you can check that out. So if I want this to be the material that that section is going to have all i have to do is just click and then i would just simply assign that material so let's do that one more time i would like to have this a car paint to be that material and you can see how quick and easy it is i would maybe also like to have this as a different material so you can see we're having fun all the way and can you guys notice that this is rendering in real time all right so you guys can also see how quick and yeah, easy this is rendering. So different materials have different properties and these properties most times are just unique to the materials themselves. So right now I have this particular material that is selected. You can see glass is turned on and I can only have two sets of main material uh, parameters I can play with. One is the scatter and the next one is refract. So scatter gets to do with the kind of light I want to scatter through this, all right? So the kind of light I want to scatter through this particular material, I've set it all the way to red. And then for the refract, refract gets to do with how transparent I want this glass to be. So if I go ahead and punch this all the way down, you can see that it is no longer transparent. But if I go ahead and punch it all the way up, you see it starts becoming transparent. So things like glass and some uh, custom materials, you get to play with parameters that get to do with refract and also reflect. So refract gets to refract light, while reflect gets to reflect light. So think about it like your mirror and your glass of water. And most of these things or most of these materials, they have an IOR, which is known as index of refraction. And this index is what controls how much refraction they have. Next thing we need to talk about is emission. So emission is a kind of material type or a kind of parameter that exists in materials that you can use. And this simply means that you can use this to actually power things. So you can emit light from any given object that you have emission turned on. So if I go ahead and start turning on emission here, you can see this begins to distribute light or begins to cast or serves as a light emitting object. All right. So we can use this to emit light all the way out. Moving on. All right. So let's just move on to something real quick. So I'm moving on to this. And now you might be asking why? Why this? Now I'll tell you why I'm talking about this. I'll talk about this for two reasons. First of all, I want to clarify certain things that has to do with cameras. And the next thing I want to talk about is the things that has to do with samples. All right. So let me just go ahead and raise this all the way up. So you might have seen the demo before this video. But if you did not see the demo, then I think you should consider subscribing and checking the community all the time. All right. So I have this here and this is as simple as it gets. So you might have seen a couple of tutorials or maybe videos where this just keeps ray tracing to the end and you don't see anything happening here. Now I'm going to share a couple of ideas about how these things work. So this particular uh, object that we have here is glass. This other object that we have here is glass, but this is not the only object we have. If I move this here, you're going to notice that there is another glass object that this tint of color has been scattered around and we have this other one here. All right. So we cannot undo. So I just have to manually put this back. Okay. So I have to manually put this back and cross my fingers that it is properly placed. So with this here, what we can now do, all right, guys, listen, what we can do is this. If we want this to be totally transparent, we need to increase the samples that this renderer is using. Right now, the amount of samples or the amount of global bounces that we're having here is just set to four. This might freeze your PC for a while, but don't be scared. It's not going to freeze it for life. So I'm just going to go ahead and amp this all the way up. 
all right so with this now increased all the way to 32 which is actually the highest you can see we're having way more cleaner bounces now this does not affect the pc at this point it only affects the render so because we're doing this on the browser you can see i'll just simply rotate let me shake this a bit all right and just let it be and it is going to go ahead and give you a very clean render the render it is giving you is way cleaner than what we had before so if you want to go in and start playing with the amount of scatters that you had earlier you know you can come through and you can start making all those nice you know nice changes and you can see that we're having this you can see because we are having all of this you can see that nice uh fill on the floor you can see it's casting perfectly fine on the floor so next thing which i want to share with you guys now we've talked about this i'm just going to leave all this the way it is and focus on camera so i would like to share a couple of ideas with you guys when it gets to do with camera all right so when it gets to do with camera there's a couple of things you guys need to know so first things first Pinhole cameras are cameras that do not have aperture in them which simply means you cannot have things that has to do with depth of field all right now it also means that you may not be able to have things that has to do with bouquet all right and it also also means that you my good friends may not be able to actually simulate things that has to do with distances which is actually depth of field so the thin lens camera on the other hand has aperture or things that you may call f numbers and these things help you get your depth of field and you know all of those cool bouquet stuff that you get when you make a picture so i'll go back to the first uh image so i can take a good look at this and so i can share some lights with you guys so with this here if you want to get depth of field you will not be able to get depth of field with this thin lens because we already have autofocus checked and autofocus would calculate the distance or the center point of your camera and divide it by the total area and still keep all right and still keep the depth the way it is so you don't get out of focus but then if you want to achieve depth of field you need to turn this off and most of the time right most of the time we're working with a 50 millimeter lens and we're working with a 24 millimeter sensor which is perfectly fine sometimes you may be forced to work with a uh, lens or with a focal lens that is a bit smaller so you might uh, be working with something that has to do with a 35 millimeter lens a 70 millimeter lens so i'm just going to i can't type okay i cannot type on this thing yet all right so it's still an experimental version that's why so you can choose to work with something that has to do with a 70 millimeter lens or a 50 millimeter lens like in our case so with this here you may want to achieve depth of field now depth of field in its sense can be achieved in two ways of course you can manipulate that all right but most of the times your numbers or your f numbers or your or aperture number contributes to how much depth you can get some cameras come with 1.4 some come with 1.8 and so on and so forth and at the same time the distance from where the object is to the camera also matters a lot so if the distance from where the object is to the camera is a little bit too far you may be able to have that image blurred out and if it is too close that simply means that the image in itself might be either blood out as well depending on the number that is set here so i'm just going to turn this down just to give you guys an example and set this to 1.4 as i'm setting this to 1.4 and i'm turning this down right just merely turning this down you can see this is out of focus if i go ahead and ramp this up you can see it becomes it starts getting right into focus all right so you can see it starts getting right into focus which simply means we cannot get near depth of field and we can only get far depth of field all right so i'm going to set this back to 1.4 just to explain something to you guys so with this set to 1.4 if i start pushing this all the way up you would notice just a little bit within this point all right just a little bit within this point i'm beginning to have a much more crispy or clearer looking object 
and begin to have a much more clearer looking object. So these are things that you can go ahead, play with and get good results with. Next thing which we need to look at is the environment or the lighting. So lighting is very essential for everything that you're working with. So for a beautiful scene like this, you can choose to not have any form of light. You can choose to load in an image that you can use to drive the lights. So let me see, do we have any image here? All right, so I have an image from the images from the Nvidia Gaunga. So you can go ahead and check that out. So I'm going to simply load this image in and we can use this image to light the look of this particular shot or of this particular object. You can still go ahead and find other images and use them to light or give a much more visual description of how this particular shot would look like. Or you can simply make use of a gradient and you know can turn this all the way down and just have something nicely looking for our shot so it totally depends on what you want to do if you want to add extra light sources you can do all of these things from here and you can also manipulate and play with the parameters directly there so i would like to know what you guys think about this the tools are here for you to go ahead and work with this and this is incredibly nice you know so this is incredibly nice for it to exist at this point in time. So you don't necessarily need to buy a render or, you know, go ahead and spend a lot of money trying to render your stuff while you can do them directly on your browser for free. So I would like to know what you guys think about this. If there are certain things you want me to cover or talk more on, tell me in the comment section and I'll do my best to cover those things for you guys. All right, so one more thing that you guys might necessarily need to know is directly here we have something known as tone mapping. So tone mapping actually deals with how your image looks on screen. All right, so by default, it is set to sRGB curve. You can choose to set it to be none, which gives you something like this, or you can go ahead and make it fixed. Within fixed, you can change the gamma value of what you want. Other things that you might need to see, or other things you might need to know, especially when you're working with something like this, is this other section that is known as film response. So the film response also contributes to how your image looks on screen. So right now we do not have a lot. Basically what we have here is the ACES. And the ACES simply means Academic Color Encoding System, which is uh, one of the best ones that you can get and you can use it to actually style your scene to make it look a little bit better than, you know, than it looked earlier when you started out the render so depending on what you want to achieve at the end of the day you can go in play with these things and see what you can get out of them by the way you can use this all right to actually dock this all the way down or maybe if you want to stretch it all the way across then you can use this depending on how much workspace you have so uh if you're done with this if and you want to save this you want to save a piece of your render out what you can do is you can click on the bugger menu here and go directly here and click on the save file so by just simply clicking on the save file two things is going to happen first of all it's going to start saving your file and then it's going to restart the render. So the interactive preview render is going to go ahead and restart. So if I click on save file here, it's going to download that and you can notice that automatically this has started re-rendering, right? So this is what happens. And if you like this video, you know what to do. Go ahead and hit the like button and also turn on notification. And if you're new here, it's going to be amazing if you can hit the subscribe button and also turn on notification so you don't miss the next episode. And just a quick tip, I think I will be covering a video that has to talk about the custom material building if you want to work with this tool. And that's going to be about it. And until I see you guys again with a tutorial update, free Friday, tutorial Tuesday, tips and tricks, things like this. Peace.